All right, so SRAM just released the Maven brakes today, and they are huge. They're probably one size smaller than the brakes on your F350 Super Duty. Maven is designed for extreme duty, offering even more power and control. So let's dive in and see what they're all about. Just a really quick primer on SRAM brakes before we get into the nitty gritty here. SRAM offers three levels of braking, light duty, heavy duty, extreme duty, level, code, maven. So let's see what it takes to be an extreme duty brake. So let's talk about a couple of things that make these brakes different. First of all, they're huge. I've measured and they're roughly the size of Rhode Island. They have four giant pistons in each caliper and a big lever piston to match. All of this, gives them up to 50% more power than codes. All of the power in the world would do you no good if when you pulled the lever, the caliper exploded or twisted or warped or something. There are four really big bolts holding these calipers together because they need them. The pads on the Mavens are now named XL in contrast to the large pads found on codes. So these things are really big and they make a lot of surface contact with your rotor. And all of this means there's less force required at the lever, up to 32% less rider input is, is required and that leads to less arm pump. There are some downsides. Because the Mavens are huge, it means they're pretty heavy. You might wanna hit the gym a couple of times so you have the upper body strength to install these things on your bike. Let's do some science. We're talking about race cars. F1 cars have brakes that run very, very hot. These brakes won't even start to bite until about 400 to 600 degrees. They can get all the way as hot as about 1800 degrees. Now, somewhere in here is that optimal temperature. F1 races can be a little tricky because on that first corner, your brakes aren't quite ready yet. So you come into the corner and you don't have the power you need. On the other hand, you get on a track with a bunch of tight corners and no straightaways, and you don't have the airflow you need to keep those brakes cooled off. So it's all about trying to keep the brakes in this butter zone where they offer the most amount of power. And that same situation applies to mountain bike brakes, but on a far less extreme level. So just like the guy who wears a tiny beanie, brakes need some heat, but not too much. Mavens have a greater thermal mass than other brakes on the market, which means they do take a little longer to heat up, but they resist overheating much better. Once up to temperature, they can hold that optimum brake temperature, whether it's cold outside or whether you're jerry skidding down the mountain. In other words, warm them up and your brakes are gonna feel good for the rest of the ride. So SRAM is typically used dot fluid in their brakes, uh, but the Mavens use mineral oil. Dot fluid has a couple of advantages over mineral oil, but it also has a couple of cons. And let's start by talking about boiling point. Now, brakes need an incompressible fluid in them so that when you pull the lever, that pushes the pistons. And technically water is incompressible, but water boils at 212 degrees. So you could use water, but the second that heats up, you pull the lever and all of that water is now gas, which is compressible. So the gas just compresses inside your line the pistons don't move. So that's why brakes usually use dot fluid or mineral oil. Dot fluid has a really high boiling point, typically a lot higher than mineral oil. The 5.1 that SRAM uses in most of their brakes boils at about 515 degrees. That is until it gets contaminated. Once it's contaminated, it now boils at a much cooler 375 degrees, which coincidentally is the perfect temperature for cooking pancakes. And it only takes about two years for dot fluid to have absorbed 4% water. And this water is gonna get in your brakes uh, just from the air you ride in. Uh, no seals are perfect, so water will find its way inside your brakes, and that's gonna mix with your dot fluid, which will lower your boiling point, which will kill your brake performance. Mineral oil, on the other hand, typically has a lower boiling point than most dot fluids, but because it's an oil, it's hydrophobic, meaning it repels water. So it doesn't get contaminated and that boiling point remains consistent over time. Water will still get in your brakes, but now it's gonna pool somewhere, either in your lever or your caliper, most likely your caliper. Better seals will help keep that water out. And that's what SRAM has done on the Mavens. They've built some proprietary seals that work very well with mineral oil that retain their shape, even if they're really hot or really cold. So technically less water should be getting in your brakes. So in the past, when I've installed brakes, I've cussed out internal cable routing. I've bolted the brakes on. I've done a half-assed job at bedding the brakes in and I've hit the trails without too much thought. But 
Mavens do allow for a little bit more tuning, and they allow for that because they're more powerful. So you can technically use a smaller rotor. So you can adjust the power by the rotor size you're using. So SRAM does recommend starting at the smallest size rotors that your fork and frame will allow, which is crazy, right? Don't just assume you're super burly and bolt 220s on front and back. These brakes are different than most brakes you've ridden. And remember, brakes need heat to work. So if your rotors are too big, they're not gonna get hot enough and your pads aren't gonna bite like they should. So start with the smallest size rotors and look at your rotor spokes for signs of needing to size up or size down on your rotors. If the spokes are bronze or browned a little bit, you've got the perfect size rotor. They're heating up, but not too much. If they've turned purple or rainbowy, they're getting too hot. You need a bigger rotor. And if they're silver, it means they're not getting hot enough, which means you need a smaller rotor. And now because you can run a smaller rotor, you have offset a little bit of that system weight. Rotors are pretty heavy. So if you run smaller rotors, you've now counteracted a little bit of the extra weight from the calipers and levers. You can further fine tune your brakes by the pad material you choose. SRAM offers two materials in the XL brake pads. You've got organic and sintered. Organic pads are gonna have a stronger initial bite. They're going to be quieter generally. They are better suited though for dry terrain. So perfect here in Utah. Uh, if you live anywhere where it rains once in a while, you might want the sintered pads. Sintered pads offer a little bit less initial bite, but they do resist overheating better and they work a heck of a lot better in wet and muddy conditions. There you have the breakdown on the new SRAM Maven brakes. Give us just a little bit of time, pray for some summer weather here in Utah so we can go ride these things and we'll get you a full ride review. Thanks for sticking around.